Welcome back to another fine day here in Surrey and to my Defender 110. Now, I've owned this car for over a year now, so I thought it was probably about time I did a video answering the question, can you daily a Defender? Now, I've got four cars, and out of those four cars, I've done the most mileage in the last 12 months in this car. So I think that speaks volumes. But can you legitimately use one on a daily basis and uh, live with it? So let's look at the uh, the reasons. We're going to look at the pros and the cons of running a Defender as a daily driver. So first of all, let's look at the reasons to own one of these. They're a safe place, relatively safe place to put your money. They're not really going to depreciate because they're not made anymore. So uh, they're very desirable cars. Obviously, like you know, some larders aren't made anymore, and they're you know not desirable. But the uh, Defender is always going to have a cult following, especially this one. The new one they've messed up on a bit, is most uh, Defender owners' opinion. So it just makes this older original Defender that much more desirable. So yeah, in comparison to new cars, you're not gonna lose as much money in terms of uh, depreciation. So you could run this, put miles on it, and yeah, you're not gonna lose as much in comparison. They're very easy to work on. Pretty much everything on these things just unbolts, uh, which is great. You know, I'm not a mechanic, but I've managed to fix several things on this car since owning it. Um, the downside of that is it's not that good when it comes to theft. Anyone with a buzz gun can have the doors off in literally a matter of seconds, which uh, is slightly concerning. So you do need to um, consider security, but I'm gonna talk about that in a bit. Uh, most people love these cars. They're, there's just something about them. People seem to just, I don't know, they, they like them. They let you out in junctions. You know, in a Range Rover, they just scowl at you. There's no chance you're getting out of a junction in a Range Rover. In this, they, they kind of like, oh out you go so yeah you know other defender owners wave at you a bunch of mad people so you're part of this little kind of cult i mean group uh but yeah it's it's a nice group most of them are friendly um watch my, one of my other videos and you'll see there are some not so friendly ones like the farmers and the army lot uh but that's a different video if you've got kids they love this car it's just like a giant tonka toy to them it's, it's just such a cool kind of like almost like a monster truck because it's so big and for me, that's a big one. Um, my old man, he used to have loads of kind of cool cars when he was younger. And that's a big memory for me. You know, in, in like another 20 years, there aren't going to be these types of cars anymore. Petrol and diesel is probably going to be, God knows how much a litre, and everything's going to be electric. So, you know, if you've got the opportunity to make memories and, you know, instill that into your kids, you know, so that they can remember the cool cars and everything. I know there's more to life than cars, but if you're a car guy, you, you'll get what I mean. So, yeah, it's it's a very, very big thing for me. They're actually reliable if you get a good one. Um, we've actually done several long trips in this now. When we first bought it, you'll probably see in one of my other videos, we had a bunch of issues. We kind of got stitched up by the dealer. A bit unfortunately well, that's my opinion anyway and i had to spend several months getting all these little niggly things sorted out uh, which are now sorted and it is it's a great car now it's reliable i wouldn't think twice about driving this you know two three hundred miles that there isn't really any issues with this anymore there is just so much space as well in these cars not when i say space not here there's very little space in the cabin but in the boot it's just like cavernous. You can just keep chucking stuff in and it just never fills up. So yeah, in terms of going places and, and just generally, you know, needing to chuck stuff in the back, you're never going to run out of space in a car like this. As you'd kind of expect with a Defender, you genuinely can go pretty much anywhere you want in these cars either. You're not really going to get stuck. It doesn't matter what the weather throws at you, if it's raining, snowing, icy, these cars just, they work great. The only issue I've had with this is that the central locking throws a bit of a hissy fit sometimes when it's iced up. I don't know if it's just one of the locks sticking, but apart from that, I haven't had issues with uh, the cold weather and with the types of tires I'm running, you can just go through the snow, no issues at all. Also, it's a bit different, but I, I don't mind parking this car next to others. I think this is more intimidating parking this next to other cars than worrying about getting door dings. With the Range Rover and the other cars, I hate parking next to other people. I'm one of those people that literally my wife hates me for it. I'll park in the far corner of the car park and make the family walk so you don't get dents in your car, but inevitably you'll come back and some Muppet will be parked next to you anyway. Uh, but yeah, you, I don't worry about parking this anywhere. It's got big, not rock sliders, but kind of side steps on it and yeah it's not a type of car you need to worry about getting little dents on that's for sure um, and a big one for me is that you can easily modify these cars you can make them dailyable dailyable is that even a word but you can you i'll talk about that more in a minute but you can do so much to these cars like i said everything is just like you know 
everything is just bolt on and bolt off. So you can make them exactly as you want them. Either you're a traditionalist and you want it completely standard, cool. Or if you want to have it like a LED Christmas tree, you can do that as well. So there's lots of reasons to own one of these. Now let's have a look at the reasons perhaps not to own one of them. Security and safety. These things are extremely appealing to thieves. You do not want to be dailying one of these and leaving it in, say, like a train station car park every day where people obviously recognize it and they know it's always going to be there. Um, they are without security upgrades notoriously easy to steal um, either as the whole car or bits off them so yeah you you need to consider that definitely if you're going to buy one of these and park it in the same place in a public place every day uh, for work there's generally something leaking on it whether it's an oil leak or there's like water getting in somewhere that is just part of defender ownership you just need to just man up and deal with it that is going to be part of your ownership experience of having a Land Rover uh, Defender this has had leaks um, I've almost given up now trying to fix them uh, most of the, the you know the, the major ones are fixed where it was leaking actually from the transmission um, there's like a little water leak sometimes when it's really heavy rain but I think I've figured that out that was just a little um, seal on the wind screen so just little things like that but adds character doesn't it these things are extremely noisy they uh, coming from a, a range rover especially th these things are just so loud with the kids in the back on a motorway you can hardly hear them some might say that's a good thing but yeah it's, it's a very very noisy place to be if you're doing longer miles in it um, you do get used to it and you can upgrade the stereo but yeah ultimately it's a very noisy place the turning circle when it's on standard wheels is pretty much like you know cruise ship standard it just does not turn you need to do like five six point turns to get around again there is a way of improving that that i'll go into shortly but yeah it does even catch me out now even though i've got a wider um offset it still catches me out the standard cars before you tune them are very slow and the brakes aren't even that good so you do need to factor that in uh, the clutch is also very heavy you will get a massive quad from driving a defender every day and they clunk they're just clunky there's so many different clunky sounds coming out of the uh, the engine and the, the gearbox and underneath but again it's just character that is part of uh, driving a Defender and you do adapt to it as well so it's not all that bad. Uh, the height of these cars is slightly over two meters. Why they did that I'll never know. Uh, the, the rear you can obviously load it with like bags of cement if you really want to but because of that you do struggle to get under the uh, the two meter height restrictions in most car parks and multi-story. So again if you're going to daily it and you live in a city or something or you live in an area where you're going to go into a city and park up you often find that you can't actually get into the car parks. Likewise, most national trust places these days out in the countryside, they're two meter height restrictions, which is really annoying because, you know, that, that's where we kind of go with the kids and you often can't get into them. So you need the wife kind of hanging out the window, watching the roof to make sure you don't catch it on the, uh, on the height restriction. There's nowhere to put your elbows. As you can see, I'm fairly tall and there is absolutely nowhere to put your elbows in these things. It's so frustrating. But again, you get used to it or you just drive with your window down constantly, which is pretty much what I do. Um, if you're over six foot, the standard steering wheel is its just too big. So you need to miniaturize it, get a smaller one. And uh, there's not much leg room either. You can see here, look, my, my knee is pretty much banging on that. Again, I'm six... 6.1 let's say 6.2 for YouTube and yeah th there's no real room here uh, so you can put the seat fully back but with the seat fully back there's no room in the back for kids um, even with little legs directly behind you so yeah th there's like a, a few issues really uh, the back seats they're too upright for car seats to be very comfortable for your children on long journeys and um, yeah defenders they do like to rust especially the chassis on these so that's never a good thing. This is a 2012, so it's not that old, but even you know, relatively new ones, they're still plagued with um, chassis rust. You can get galvanized chassis to replace them, but you're talking thousands and thousands of pounds to do that. So it's, it's just not ideal. So as you probably guess, there are quite a few negatives to owning one of these and trying to daily them. 
but you take the rough with the smooth and it's it's still a car you can daily. You can actually make them into very good usable cars, which is pretty much what I've done. Um, you can remap them. Standard is around 120 horsepower. You can have them remapped up to about 170 and keep it safe. You can go more than that, but you start needing to do intercoolers and hybrid turbos. So it gets more expensive then and you put in more stress on the uh, on all the components. So a standard remap, a stage one, the likes of Empire Tuning who did this, uh, just it makes a massive difference. It really does convert it into um, a much more drivable car. It's just a lot torquier in the gears and uh, yeah, obviously a, a lot more power going from 120 to 170 in a car like this it is noticeable. You can upgrade the suspension. Um, there's companies like Alive, JE Motorsport, Motorworks I think they are, Old Man Emu, Alive. Uh, basically you can fit uprated springs, dampers, ARBs, anti-roll bars, and just completely change the, uh, the characteristics of how the car handles. Even things like improving the brakes, I'd recommend that if you're gonna be doing motorway miles uh, the wheels and tires if you upgrade them go for a lower offset so the, the the wheels are further out the arches not only does that improve stability but it actually improves your turning circle as well which uh, as I mentioned is the equivalent of a cruise ship on these things I've got the uh, twisted and uh, BF Goodridge all-terrain tires makes a massive difference huge difference and the turning circles improve too um, if you do upgrade a suspension, make sure you go for ones that lower the rear by around three or four centimeters. You'll notice defenders sit kind of hunched at the front. So by bringing the back down a little bit, you will be able to get into those uh, two meter high restriction car parks. Do fit better headlights. The standard headlights are like wet candles in the wind. They're just absolutely useless. Uh, so upgrade to LED ones. That's what these are. And massive, massive difference. Again, you can actually see where you're going in the dark, which, which is you know quite a good thing, really. Um, do soundproof them. The soundproofing not only makes it quieter so you can hear your children and your wife, it also reduces the amount of vibration. I've lost a lot less filling since I have um, soundproofed this car. So it's definitely something you want to do and it just makes it a more enjoyable place to be if you're doing bigger miles. Uh, put a better head unit in as well. The standard Defender head unit is like something from the 60s. And if you do that, you probably want to upgrade the speakers. You could also put a double DIN unit in, which means you can then have a big screen in the center. You can put sat nav in. So there's all different things you can do. Um, one major, major thing you definitely need to do is increase the security, improve the security. 100% you need to do that. If you want to keep your Defender, especially if you spend money modifying it, you definitely need to do that. Even things like the Optimil. The Optimil is a removable steering wheel with a spinny, spinny, spinny thing. And uh, that just stops people from driving off with, um, with your car, basically, because they can't get the steering wheel on. And because it spins as well, they can't just drive it using the Optimil. Uh, obviously, the other option is you can just keep your car completely standard and live with it as it is. Nothing wrong with that. You probably won't enjoy it quite as much if you're doing longer miles, but ultimately everyone's different and everyone buys Defenders for their own reason. So can you daily a Defender? Yes, absolutely. I've daily mine. I've done more miles in this than any of my other cars in the past 12 months, as I said at the start. I have modified mine to make it more to how I like it. For me, it ticks all the boxes now and categorically, yes, you can daily a Defender. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have, please subscribe, hit the thumbs up, drop a comment, and I will see you again soon.